I have a three cat situation going on here. Why? Well, it must have something to do with the fact that today is day 72 of 100 days of making comics! Actually, there's little to no correlation between these events. But still, music! Hey look, someone left their shoes outside. Why would they do that? Who could they be? Well, it was me, of course. They were my shoes. Why would I leave them outside? Because they stink of gasoline. That's right, the kind of petrol, fossil fuel refined gasoline that is combustible. We use it in our engines, in our cars, to power them. Well, I did a thing yesterday. Um, I got, I had filled up with gas, and I'm not 100% sure if this was my fault or not. I don't think it was, but basically, um, there's the little latch, so you put it in, and then you click it, and it stays on while it's in the car. And then you hear clunk, and it's done, and you pull it out. Done that a gazillion times. Never had a problem. I heard clunk, I pulled it out, and it was still pouring gas. Yes, that's right. It was still pouring gas. Um, now, the two possibilities are that I heard the clunk, but it was something else, and I made some kind of mistake, or it didn't clunk, or, and it was my fault, or it clunked, but didn't stop the flow. Uh, and I'm, even though I'm willing to admit it might have been my fault, I don't think it was, because I got in the car and it was like over full, you know, in the, in the, en in the engine, in the gas tank. So seemingly it was done. So maybe, I don't know, this is a station I don't normally go to in a different town, maybe it like clunks once there, and then clunks again at the, at the nozzle? I don't know, but the, the net result was, I pulled it out, and it was such a weird thing that you would think, whoa, it's still pulling, uh, pouring, and put it back in. But I pulled it out, and I saw the stream, which was like, you know, a clear hose, basically, of liquid. And I'm like, what is that? Like, as opposed to, real, like, have, it was so far into my brain that I didn't realize what it was. And I was like, what? And I turned it left as opposed to turning it off or putting it in. And it, this was, you know, like a second, two seconds, but it was, took that long for my brain to register what was going on. So I was like, huh? And it was like, goose. And it's like a, it's a gallon. It, it's like more than a garden hose. It's like pouring everywhere. So it got all over the ground, all over the side of the car, a bit on my shoes. So I, I, I realized it was like, bah! and I put it, you know, turned it off, put it in. And I looked around and like, nobody noticed. There was somebody filling up behind me to the next to me, people walking around. Nobody noticed. And not that kind of New Yorker, like, I ain't seen nothing, but just like, hey, hey what? you know, like, like there was nobody, including Q, who was in the car. It was amazing. Um, so I couldn't do anything about the ground, but I, there was a squeegee there, so I kind of squeegeed off the car as best I could so there wasn't gasoline all over it. Um, and then we drove home with the windows open because I stunk like gasoline. So my cars, uh, my cars, my cars, the cars I put on my feet, uh, I left them outside overnight. They're probably fine now, but I'm on my way out to go make prints. I was supposed to do um, independent crossroads with Peter Palmiotti today, but we had technical difficulties, so that got pushed back to next week. So look forward to that next week. Um, and so I'm on my way out to get prints made and also postcards! Ha <laughs> ha! Well, as you can see, saw, saw, swings, slide, as you could playground, the printing is done, sort of. I got all my 11 by 17 prints done, the reprints I needed, I also made a bunch of the Hari 4, I kind of made a mistake. Um, when I print, there's always, by necessity, a bit of a white border, which I would like to get away from, but then you have to pay for cuts, and it's not really worth it, and if people put it in a frame, you won't notice it anyway, so blah. I've come to deal with that. Occasionally, it's a little bit off-center, like, like a little bit more wide on one side than the other. Again, not a huge deal. So when I go, I usually test the print, make sure it's good, and I print the rest. And so I did the Horror A4 print, and it looked okay. Uh, and then I, you know, the rest were going, and I kind of looked at it, and I was like, oh, the border is a little bit off, but whatever. The short version is, I, I gave it more of a border than I meant to, and it's a little bit off center. And I made like 40 of them. Uh, ha <laughs> ha! They're not terrible, they're certainly sellable, but they're just not exactly what I wanted them to be. And when I started doing the other prints, I realized what I did wrong. I had a setting wrong. I'm like, oh, I could have done it this other way. So... When I was done, well, I was done, I had extra paper left over, which I shouldn't have, because I needed some 9 by 12 prints as well, which I then get cut later, but I was having a hard time getting it to print the correct size. The person there today couldn't help me, so I just said, I don't need them right now, it's not important, the show I have Saturday, much more important, the 11 by 17 stuff gets done. So I made about 20 more prints of the horror with the correct border, and so what I'll do is those will be the ones I sell first, but then if I run out, I'll have the others. And I have a few prints like that, where I have a slightly less good version, in my opinion, that are like my backups. And most people never notice the difference, it's a slightly different tint of color, or the paper's not quite as thick, or in this case, the border's a little bit bigger. And again, most people don't even notice, so whatever. But I did make extra, like, nice ones to have, and if I sell 20 of those, then I'm in a good enough position, then sure, I will sell some of the other ones too. Um, the other thing is, I had a batch of 8.5 by 11 
uh, of the same cardstock, but a little bit heavier that I had tried to use before, and the, the printer, the UPS that I go to, doesn't really, it won't work there. So I was like, well, I used the other half when I made the Kickstarter postcards. Let me go ahead and use this and make just giveaway postcards with, like, info like, hey, I do this comic. And, you know, I'm sorry, I heard the cats. Info like, hey, I do this comic, and here's where I'm on social media. So I could give that out instead of my business card that has, like, my phone number and things like that that I don't necessarily want everybody at a convention getting. But it ended up being more expensive than I thought. It's going to be either done tonight or early tomorrow morning, in which case I'll pick it up on the way to the bachelor party. But it is, short version, they're going to be at 50 cents each, which is way more than I thought they'd be. Now, luckily, there's a little bit of Kickstarter money left, so I'm kind of throwing it at that, so I'm not out that money. But I thought because I already had the paper, and I guess if I didn't have the paper, it would be more expensive. But I'm doing two up, double-sided, and then the cuts and everything, and I'm getting like 160 done, and it just comes to about 50 cents each, which is a bummer because I thought maybe I'd have a stack to give out and just give them to everybody, but what I'll probably do is only give them if people ask and also give them if somebody buys something else to get in the back. Because that's the main thing I wanted them for. Somebody buys a print of Godzilla, hey, when you get home, you'll see this, see that I'm online, maybe you watch me on YouTube, maybe you're interested in my comic, but just a way to kind of advertise what else I have to offer other than just the print they bought. Um, so those are being made and they'll either be done tonight or tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's the bachelor party and then the show is Saturday and then blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, tomorrow morning I plan on doing my 30 minutes before everything. I still have to do my 30 minutes tonight. I spent most of the day making those prints and running around. Like, it just took a while. Um, so now it's close to dinner time. I'm making dinner, and I will do my 30 minutes later. So that's just sort of the update right now from me with my weird hair. Hmm. I'm not at my desk, but I did my time. I did more than 30 minutes. I did one hour. One hour on, I keep saying page uh, 10, but it's actually page 11, which I'm almost done with. And I'm not going to do the normal thing where I pan over it. I will just tell you that I filled in the backgrounds and did the shading for the remaining panels and got to work on the final panel, which is sort of a alternate view of the top one. So it again involves drawing the room and furniture and things like that. It's not done, but I got a big chunk out of it. So I'll just show you where I'm at right now on that page. Four! <laughs> that was it. So there you are. All right, I'm going to close it out. I need to... I, I was going to load up the car tonight, but because I have the bachelor party tomorrow, so I was going to load up the car for the show Saturday. But Q has a bachelorette party, and she's going to be driving up to the city. And I don't know if I want to have it all loaded up with everything. I might put a few things in there, but not completely loaded up. Just, I don't know, because otherwise I, have to, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do something. But I'm not going to be working on videos anymore. I will, however, do a quick question and answer time. See, now I don't have to worry about dropping music in because I've done it. I'm going to do uh, two quick question and answers. The first one comes from Mr. Adam Shagan. Now, Adam Shagan has been uh, working for the government for the better part of 13 years. Previous to that, he used to dig ditches on the side of the road, and now he's in charge of the department of the government that monetizes that. So, Adam Shagan, here's what your question was, and everyone else. What do I think of the Booster Gold-inspired drone? I love Booster Gold, which is assumedly why he's asking me. I don't know what you're talking about. I know what drones are. I've seen the little drones, you know, with cameras in them and things like that. I've heard tell that Amazon is developing them, although I've never seen it in real life or even know if it exists yet in a practical sense. Um, is there some new drone that looks like Skeets, that, that functions as like a sidekick, that has an information repository? Or are you referring to those drones that have been around for a while as mainly cameras or in some cases like the equivalent of a an airplane or a helicopter people fly them for fun i don't know i did do a search booster gold drone drone booster gold and what came up was a lot of the drones that i was talking about with the cameras in them or pictures of booster gold so if there is some new one that looks like skeets or is gold or is in some way reminiscent of booster gold specifically i have not seen it and could not find it with a short sh search short i didn't spend a long time on it um, but if you're asking me what I think of drones in general, I am very ambivalent. They seem to be good for getting interesting shots for low-budget movies and high-budget movies. I have not seen them used for shipping. Uh, I don't own one. I've only seen one in real life twice. So I don't have a strong opinion about them. Uh, I never made the connection to Booster Gold because I think of his like, sort of hanging by his shoulder and talking to him. Whereas these are always like way up there and taking pictures of us. So that is my answer. It's not a very good one, but that's the answer I have for you, sir. I hope you will take this information and it enriches your day as you work in the department of ditch digging in the government. Thank you. Okay, second question for the day. It's a two for one. Two, two, two for one. I don't even have to put post post effects. I'm just like, two, 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 two for one. Two for one. 
See? It's easy. Editing. Right there. Live. Practical editing. It's a new thing I've invented. So, I really like when I talk standing up more. Can you see? There's so much more energy when I'm sitting. I'm all like, well, I'm sitting, and let me tell you about the art I drew. Whereas when I'm standing, I'm like, BOOM! <laughs> also, I probably just feel energized because I'm done with that stand, standy slash print and made the print, and my arms are like crazy rubber band bananas that are just flinging all over. Okay, so the second question from Miss... Anna Warren Sebrian. Now, Anna owns a shop called Elusive Comics and Games, but she's more well known as a fire eater down in Brazil. She used to do it back in the 90s, and she continues to do it to this day. She goes down once a year for the big festival and chomps down that fire. But when she's not doing that, she's running Elusive Comics and Games here in the Bay Area of California. And she asks, what's your ideal customer? And... I, I don't, here's the thing, that is a good question to ask. That is a business person question to ask. She's a business person. That is probably why she thought of it. Maybe not, but that's my assumption. And it, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I took one or two business classes in art school, in animation, surprisingly. Um, not as many as probably I should have, but one of them was like, hey, when you're working on a pitch, when you're working on a cartoon, who's your audience? When you're pitching to the network, you're going to have to say, hey, this is for, you know, uh, kids from 7 to 12 that are ladies or whatever, you know, whatever the, the idea you have, kids that are ladies, uh, you know, or this is a comedy that's for the type of kid that likes, you know, Ninja Turtles, but not, you know... And what demographic are you aiming for? And is it a, a vibrant demographic and all that stuff? These are all legitimate things to think about. I don't think about any of that when I'm working on the horror. Now, when I'm thinking about prints, I, I think about it a little bit because, oh, what is sold before? What's going to sell again? You know, things like that. But so in the case of my own personal work, which is how I'm going to answer the question, what is my ideal customer is me is someone like me, someone who is into the same kind of things I'm into, who likes comics and movies and animation and all that stuff, and and, and will get some of the references I'm making uh, and appreciate that I'm trying to put a new spin on something. But I think it's uh, what I'm creating, while I'm not creating it for anybody specific, I think it, it should be easily digestible by anybody. Even if you've never seen a Godzilla movie in your life or you know know anything about the things that I'm interested in, I'm trying to make it very straightforward and readable. But if you're into what I'm into, you'll get a little extra zoom. Zoom? Zoop? Zoop. Zoop is my, You got like extra little zoop. <laughs> I'm always making up words. English is not enough. So uh, my ideal customer is me, which sounds egotistical, and it kind of is because I'm creating this for me. I'm like, I'm done trying to please other people, and I'm done trying to get hired and do this and this. Here's my comic. Boom. Go. This is for me. But if you want me to break it down more, the way I pitched it to a couple comic stores of people, I'm like, hey, if you have customers that like Godzilla, if you have customers that are a fan of the old Ninja Turtle black and white comics, if you have people that, you know, like just independent, uh, you know, sort of adjacent to mainstream, um, I always say it's like, like B-level. I In my own personal taste, and this comes back to it being about me, is I tend to like the most popular independent things, the most popular off the beaten path things, or the least popular mainstream things. What I mean by that is like, I'm into some punk music, but somebody like Kevin Cross would scoff at what I'm into because he's like a real punk. I'm like, I like Bad Religion and Rancid and you know, like all the punk bands that any, anybody would know, you know what I mean? Like that's into that sort of thing. So like my friends that listen to Top 40 or listen to classical rap, they're like, I don't know what this music is you're talking about. But anybody that's into punk is like, you are a poser. And it's the same way with, you know, uh, Japanese cinema and things like that. Like, I know a bit about Sentai, and I know a bit about Ultraman and Godzilla, but, you know, so the people that don't watch that, they're like, well, you know so much about this, but anybody that really knows is like, yeah, you just know the popular surface level stuff. And similarly with, you know, horror and a lot of things. So, like, I'm always just right of center. I'm not way out there with Hunter S. Thompson, but I'm not there with Steven Spielberg, although I love Steven Spielberg. I'm, like, just to the right. I'm I'm, I'm Sam Raimi pre-Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like, just... So, that's kind of the audience I'm looking for, too. Someone that isn't looking for something completely outside of the box, some completely experimental, you know, art thing that isn't, could barely be called a comic, but somebody who doesn't want to read Superman, necessarily. Somebody who wants uh, an original experience in a somewhat familiar medium, hmm? I guess. And, uh, but what would make me even happier is, uh, and I've said this before, like, if, if I had success here, that would be great. If I had success in Japan, that'd be even better. Because I feel like that's the, like, I can't, they, they get it, you know, like, like I'm homaging, you know, like, things that I've culled from their pop culture, and, and it's going back to them, and, you know, I've talked about one of my stretch goals might be when I do the trade to one of the stretch goals, well, it, probably, it will be, I don't know if I'll make it, but one of the stretch goals, when I do a Kickstarter for the big book, I'm gonna have extras in there and stuff, one will be to translate it to Japanese, 
so that I could sell it over there. And I don't know how realistic that is, but that's an awesome thing that could happen. So the short answer is, who's my ideal customer? Me, baby, me. So what I decided to do was get as ready as I could as though I was about to load up the car. And I'm glad I did because I had a stack of new prints, over a hundred, that I needed to put in bags and sort and pack away in the Tupperware that I bring. I know I look scuzzy. I'm going to take a shower and shave right after this video. So even though I won't be loading this up until tomorrow night, I have my three Tupperwares all set to go, all organized properly. And over here, I have my storage cubes. And hopefully, if I have the energy, I'm going to do something that I've been meaning to do forever which is assemble the two main towers that I normally build and use zip ties to hold them together and throw them in the car so that when I drive up there, that's one less thing I have to do, which is important because it's about a two hour drive and it doors open at 10. I'm allowed to go in at eight, which means if I want to get there at eight to have the full two hours, I'll need to leave at six, which means I'll have to get up at 5.30. Uh, and this is the night after the bachelor party, which I'm not sure when it'll be done. It's not going to be a super all night one like some people do, but it's going to be a long day of exercise -y type stuff capped off with uh, going out to eat in a bar at around eight or nine o'clock. So I definitely won't, it won't be an early night. Uh, so realistically, I don't see getting to bed before 12. I, there's no way. So I'm looking at getting five hours sleep, six hours sleep maximum. So maybe if I could sleep an extra half hour because I can get there a little later because these are built. I should really build them right now is what I should do. But well, maybe I'll build them now. But for now, I'm going to stop I want, I want to end this video so I could edit it and put it up. So I'm going to end the video so I could edit it and put it up. So let's cut to me talking about the end of the video. <sighs> I'm Mike Emirates because he's the only one that's ever done karate. But, uh, oh, speaking of not Mike Emirates, but Ox. Samurai Ox. Bass. Bass. Uh, uh, bass. 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 Bus. Samurai Ox Bus. He's he's made of metal and carries people to a destination far away. Many more than a car could. I am going off the rails today. Samurai Ox has started a new Kickstarter. For his comic, uh, I never forgot. I actually forget the title of this, but it's the sixth issue. So he's, he's one of the hundreds. He's done it successfully several times, and he is one of the most prolific. Um, I think... Uh, Fowler Bolding has got some books out, and a couple other people, uh, Scott, myself, you know, but, but, Ox is a bus. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude, I don't know why. I don't mean that in a bad way. You're a bus! But, uh, he's, he's just a powerhouse, and he's blasting through, he's doing, you know, another challenge, it's a modified challenge, as I've talked before about craziness, but he's doing his Kickstarter. Link below, check it out, support the guy with the horns, and the horn because he's a bus i don't know i hope this doesn't stick I, I i feel like i'm just being goofy but i feel like now everyone's gonna be like hey hey bus what's going on today's day 72 and if today's day 72 well then that means mm, not clean yet all right well just so you know we've got 28 days left so